Okay, here's something. Let me go back to my other screen here. Let's put this video clip up on the timeline here. And let's do the same thing. I'll position the cursor in the middle of it here. And I'll press S to split it apart. And then I'll just push it in so there's an overlap in here. And I will go to transitions again. And we'll use that same 3D shuffle transition I used before. Now if I turn the camera over to the preview screen, now maybe you can get a better sense of what this transition is really doing. It's really kind of taking one picture, the first scene, flipping it to the side and flipping it behind the second picture, which is of course still the same scene because I just cut the same scene and put the overlap in the, in the transition in that scene. Now I know one of the things you're interested in is uh, applying effects to your video clips to try and adjust the colors and brightness and stuff. Um, if you look up here, I'm going to try and zoom the camera in on this and see if we can get a close-up shot of what I'm trying to show you here. And if I get it in focus. If you can see where my mouse cursor is pointing there, there's a little, uh, I don't know how you describe this, like a little uh, button kind of thing that says event FX when you point your mouse over it. So you click on that, and then this window appears where you get to choose your effect you want to apply. So there's a number of different effects here. Um, black Restore, Add Noise, I have some things here I added myself like Boris Graffiti, Boris Effects, Sony Color Corrector, Color Balance, Chroma Keyer, Film Effects, Film Grain, variety of different things and uh, what you really kind of need to do is experiment with these and find ones that uh, improve your video the way that you are hoping to improve it. Here's that sharpened one that I used on your uh, movie before that you said you liked. For your movie, maybe this brightness and contrast one over here might be useful. So what we're going to do is just double click that to add it. You'll see it appears up here that it's been added to the chain. What you can do here is you can actually chain several different uh, effects together and have multiple effects combined together to improve or modify your video depending on what you're trying to do. So I'm going to click OK now. And so now, here's the video effects, brightness and contrast, and here's the controls here, brightness and contrast. And again, if we move our cursor into the part of the video that we're uh, interested in applying an effect to, we can see it on the preview, and we can see that as we adjust the sliders here, I can make it darker, I can make it brighter, uh, and there's a contrast control that I can adjust that, change the contrast, and the contrast center control, which I'll be honest, I don't really know exactly what that does, but 
these things usually have a help that you can click on where it says a help over here, a little question mark. And you can read what these settings do and what they mean. Play around with them and try to get it to do what you'd like to have it do. So, that's how you apply an effect. Let me go back over to this screen here. When you're done manipulating the settings on an effect and have it the way you want it, you click the X in the upper right corner of the video event effects window to so just close it out. If you want to go back and work on that settings some more, you click on that same event FX button again and this will come back up and you'll see the event, the effects you have here. If you wanted to add more effects, there's a button over here where it says plug in chainer that will open this window again and you can select another effect to add and I guess I should go ahead and just do it so you can see. We'll just pick one here. Now if you can see here, there's actually two different effects, the brightness and contrast, and the chroma blur is what I just added. And you can temporarily enable or disable either by checking or unchecking the little checkbox by the name of them. If you wanted to get rid of one, you can select it, and then there's a button over here that says remove selected plugin. So you can take out one if you don't want it anymore. And so that's, uh, that's pretty much how that works. And I think that's where I'm going to end this first lesson.